And Senator Gillibrand, thanks so much for your time tonight. It's good to see you. Thanks. How are you? I am well, thanks. Um, I want to get started, obviously, with what is um, sort of foremost in everyone's mind, and that is the potential for a government shutdown at the federal level if a deal isn't reached by Friday. You know, Senator Schumer said this morning that there's a glimmer of hope, but uh, so far talks aren't going anywhere. I just wonder if you could elaborate on that at all. Well, I think there still is a glimmer of hope. I think that people are working very hard to come together to reach a compromise and get the government to stay open because those who will be affected most are those most at risk, those who need the benefit of government services. Um, I'm most concerned about the impact it's going to have a lot, on a lot of our military families uh, who, those, who, who that you know, cut in pay will be devastating and the cut in services. People come to my offices every day when they need help with veterans benefits or social security benefits or visas or immigration issues. Those, those issues won't be able to be addressed if the government shuts down. So this morning the Obama administration was talking about the potential impact of a shutdown on a fragile economy. I mean, this seems to sort of raise the fear level among people is the hope that this will have constituents bring to bear pressure on elected officials to really get this deal done because they're worried about whatever job loss they might experience or service loss they might experience? Yeah, I think it's a serious issue, Liz. I think it's really irresponsible of just a handful of Republicans who would rather have a headline than actually do the hard work of governing. Hmm. And I think that the damage that will be done is significant, not only to, to the services that the government provides everyday folks, uh, but also, as the president said, to the economy. It will have a very bad effect. But isn't, aren't there also people on your side who say, well, wait a minute, there are certain things that I won't vote for either. For example, the defunding of Planned Parenthood or, or other things that are key issues for Democrats. Similarly, I, I understand that the Republicans have key issues, but aren't there also sort of lines in the sand on the Democratic side? That's the whole point of working together. I mean, there are things that are very important to us. There's things that are very important to them. But that's why you come to a table and you negotiate. That's why you compromise. That's why you reach a consensus. And no, I don't think defunding Planned Parenthood is wise. That is the number one safety net for women who get mammograms, women who get pre-cancer screenings, early um, uh, nutrition for women and infants, all of these programs that are really important that our services provided by such kinds of, of advocacy and uh, public, public service organizations. But that being said, Liz, I think that there are, there's a compromise to be reached. We can agree that we can tighten our belts, we can cut spending, we can cut wasteful programs out of our budget. There's no disagreement there. And in fact, Democrats have offered tens of billions of dollars of spending cuts already. Um, it's really just a question of a few members who are really trying to shut down the government for political purposes and not because they don't agree with one of our cuts or one of our other cuts. It's really not a, an issue of substance at this point. It's just an issue of politics. So just to be clear before we leave this particular point, is there anything at all that would, might be in some kind of compromise bill that would cause you as an individual elected official to say, no, I cannot vote for this thing? Well, we'll see what they're going to offer. Um, obviously, I've already voted against the last budget that was offered. I right. did not think the choices that were made were wise. I thought they were very destructive. Uh, we don't want to undermine the economy, which is, you know, some of the cuts that are being made, economists have estimated it would slow growth, it would slow the recovery, and it would create a massive amounts of job loss. I think those are highly unwise. So, yes, there are things worth fighting for, and I think that many people uh, will bear those in mind as they come to the table. But the American people expect Congress to get things done. The last election was asking people to go back to Washington, work together, and address the people's concerns. And we should be able to produce a budget that's not a job-destroying budget and one that doesn't pull the rug out from under those who need safety nets the most. Women, children, infants, those are people that we want to protect. So to this end, actually, you are pro providing or proposing now a, a sort of package of, of ideas to bolster small business, business growth. Pro Ugh, excuse me, I can't even get my words out today. So this would be part of the, one of the things that would not be able to be funded if, in fact, there was a government shutdown. I mean, some of what you're, what you're proposing seems really sort of common sense. For example, early, uh, cash for early right. capital startups, business incubators, um, investing in science parks. Uh, I mean, this is something that we're also seeing at the state level, public-private partnership, for example, between the universities and, and the private sector. Um, can you expand more on that particular aspect? Yeah, I mean, these are the kinds of investments that create opportunities for job growth. 
government doesn't create jobs. People with ideas, small businesses, they create jobs. And so this cre creates the opportunity for investment uh, through capital and also good um, investments for regional development. So for example, a tax credit for a business to save $10,000 in a savings account and not have to pay taxes on it if they invest it in their business. A 25% tax credit if you invest in a small business in these growing industries. Uh, that's a reason for an investor to invest. Um, making sure we invest in regional development ideas. So for example, many parts of our state are at the height of the nanotech industry, the high-tech industry, uh, semiconductors, biotechnology, um, energy technology. Those are great ideas for how to grow an industry in a whole region. And as you mentioned, incubators. For every dollar you put into an incubator, you get about $30 out. It has a wonderful stimulative effect in terms of helping businesses grow. And that's how we're going to create jobs. Before I let you go, I just want to ask you one thing about Debbie Wasserman Schultz. This is a, a former colleague of yours and a friend, if I'm not mistaken. She's a, a congresswoman who was tapped to be the first woman head of the Democratic National Committee. It's a big deal. But now today, there's some questions coming out as to whether or not she'll be able to juggle her current job as a congresswoman and also the head of the party going into a major election year of 2012. I mean, there's a congressman, Jim McDermott, who, who suggested that maybe she can't juggle all of this. And, and it's a little bit, there's a question, do you think that she would actually re receive these kind of questions if she were a man. I mean, Chris Dodd didn't receive these kind of questions. <laughs> Who knows? All I know is she is going to be fantastic. <laughs> she is so well qualified to do this job. She can definitely represent her constituents well and be the head of the Democratic National Committee. The job as the head of the DNC is to be a spokesperson for Democrats. Debbie understands policy. She understands our priorities. She fights every day for her district for those very same priorities. So she will be a phenomenal chair of the DNC, and I'm so pleased the president has appointed her. I think she will be an extraordinary messenger for the president's vision, what he wants to accomplish in the next two years, and what he has accomplished already. So I think she's a win-win for everyone. I think she's a great spokesman for all Democrats, and I'm just thrilled he appointed her. Well, certainly you are no stranger yourself with small children to juggling that particular job and your job as a senator. So you demonstrate it can be done, and um, perhaps the congresswoman will demonstrate mm -hmm. the same. I want to thank you very much, Senator. It's yep. great to see you, as usual. Thanks. Thanks, Liz. Take care. Dude, what happened there?